Good morning, Ziegler family. This is Janie Seltzer. I want to welcome you here with me today, and I hope you can hear me well. I look forward to talking with you today about whether or not you have a why. I uh, would love to see you coming on. If you can, oh, I see you. Thank you. I see your thumbs up and your welcoming words. It's so good to see you. Good morning. I was under assignment this morning, and that's why I'm a little later coming on. But around the world, it makes no difference to you. Some of you are waking up. Some of you are going to bed. Uh, we just had the time change here in the USA, so... Um, I got to sleep a little longer today. So it's so good to see you. Welcome everyone. And the question I want to ask you and help you with today is do you have a why? Albert Schweitzer, who as all of you know, well, most of you probably know, was an extremely intelligent man and um, just a, a deeply um, spiritual man in his way said this, the tragedy of life is what dies inside a man or woman while they live. He or she, I'm adding the she, he who or she who has a why to live for can bear almost any how? I want you to think about that. He or she who has a why can bear almost any how. Now, my friends around the world, I know that all of you, bar none, all of you have things that you don't know how you're going to work through. The hows of life, how, the hows of life are what challenge us. How am I going to figure out my spiritual life? What is that all about? How am I going to figure out my financial life? How am I going to figure out my family life? How am I going to figure out how to overcome this horrible tragedy that just hit my family? And this is happening everywhere all the time. For example, in lower Manhattan, families were devastated by the terrorist who just purposely drove down the bike lane and slaughtered as many as possible. It happened in Las Vegas when the shooter sat, got high up in the build, one of the buildings, I've forgotten which one, and shot as many people as he possibly could. It's happening in small communities where people are uh, turning to drugs, particularly heroin and opiates, to find some comfort in their life, and it's only dragging them into death. My friends, here's the thing. If we don't have a sustaining why, if we don't have a why that will hold, no matter what happens, we will be following a lesser God. You see, there are many gods in this world. A god is whatever takes the principal place of our heart. That is the definition of an idol. Anything that takes the principal place in our heart. That could be uh, the desire for success, to be the richest person in the world. It could be the desire for more and more sex, to be the sexiest and the most alluring person in the world. It could be the desire to be the most beautiful, to be the most um, intelligent. It just goes on and on and on. Or it could be to find something that just numbs you out so that you don't have to deal with life. Just recently, a friend of mine told me that a friend of hers was going across the Coronado Bridge to go to a meeting in San Diego, and it was at 7.40 in the morning, just do everybody just doing their life, and right in front of her, a car stopped, and a man jumped out of the car, looked 
went to the highest place on the Coronado Bridge and jumped. That was his decision to end the pain. Only God knows all that this this man was, was struggling with, all the pain that he felt he couldn't endure anymore. The why engulfed him into a place so dark that he only saw death as an alternative. And believe me, my friends, it is not a good alternative because you, every soul lives on either in deep darkness or in light. There are many mysteries to the afterlife, but I can tell you one thing. You are a spiritual being in a physical body, and your soul will live on. The question is, with whom will it live on? Where will it live on? How will you live on? That is the question. It is the most challenging and most important question that you can ask yourself this morning. I feel deeply your pain. I feel deeply your need. I understand all that you're going through. I talk daily and 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 love daily and listen daily to deep need. I know all that you're feeling. Please hear me. I love you in Christ. All that I say, the passion with which I speak, it is a passion fueled by love, a desire to help you find a path that will sustain you no matter what you're going through. I know that many of you know that I have recently taken a trip to Israel. It was in my bucket list. I don't have too many things in my bucket list because I'm a pretty content soul. I can have learned to bloom where I'm planted. I hope you can learn that too because no matter where we are, we can find life and joy. I've been able to do it. I pray that you can. But I did desire and the desire grew for me to go to Israel because I wanted to walk the land that Yeshua Jesus walked on. Now, I shared with you last week um, some of that, and I even talked with you about keeping oil in your lamp. Remember that? This is a little clay lamp, um, oil lamp uh, made in Israel. I have two of them, and I talked about the, the ten virgins that Jesus talked about, the ten wise women and the ten foolish women. And I explained that it really isn't about male or female. It's about whether or not we're keeping the oil, the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, friends, you know me well enough, those of you who've been listening for a while, to know what my why is. My why is the kingdom of God. My why is Yeshua, Jesus, because in the end, he is life. Jesus said, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came so that you may have life and life abundant. That is John 10.10 10 in the New Covenant. I, if you know what that is, if you've read that chapter, that magnificent chapter in the New Testament of John 10, where Jesus, Yeshua, describes himself as the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I see lots of thumbs up. If you know that chapter, then say, amen, Janie, I've read it. Just let me know that you're with me. I, I Let me take a minute here and see who all is talking to me. Oh, thank you, Kavita, for telling me I have great energy. Hi, Mimi. Good to see you. Glinda's, I don't, I hope I said that right. Yes, God bless us all. Oh, yes, yes. Come on on and let me see your face. And every once in a while, I'll say hi. You never know when I might pop in, put my glasses on. But let's go back to where I was. 
you know that I have found my sustaining why. The why that gets me through the how. When the what's of life dump into us, into our world, and change everything. Those are the suddenlies. One of my seven sacred signposts that you can read about on my website, janieseltzer.com. So friends, I told you that when I walked on the holy, sacred land of Israel, Israel um, I was so riveted by so many things, and it was wonderful. Now, I continue to process all that I learned, all that I felt, all that I wrote, and am writing about that time. But this week, I received something I want to share with you, and I painted it. I'm a little late, later coming on today because I didn't know I was going to try to paint my sustaining why. I tried once before, Yeshua, and I thought, oh, what am I doing? I can't do this, and I just kept getting nudged. My friends, you're all getting nudged in so many ways. It takes courage to step into the nudge, but I encourage you to do it because you can do what you didn't think you could do. So you may see something behind me. I uh, haven't usually had this, and that's because I just painted it this morning. This is hot at, off the press, at the press of my hot hands. Ha ha. I, um, I'm like, oh, really, Lord? You want me to do that? Oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I just felt this nudge pushing, pushing me. So I kept going. Now, I've been known that I was a poet for a long time. I didn't know myself. People said that to me. The first person who ever said that to me was when I went to this writer's conference, which by the way, I didn't even plan to go to that. I had been receiving these poems that were helping me through my how, and they were in my journal, and my journal was scribbly scrabbly and, you know, messy messy, and I never planned to share them with anyone. It was not my plan. It was, it was my need. And friends, start right there. What is your need? Address your needs, and in time, as you find your footing, you will be able to help others. Don't worry about that part. Just address what your soul is saying. Address it by writing. Address it by painting. Address it by walking, taking long walks in quiet places and listening. Address it by sitting quiet every day, a little while. Um, I think it was Pascal, it was Pascal, who said the, the real... Um, problem with the human heart is the inability to sit quietly for any length of time. I agree with that. Address your soul's needs and listen. So I did that. I listened. I was listening for the how with all of the what that had happened, the shocks of my life. And I received all these poems in my scribbly scrabbly journal. And I, I sort of, I, I never intended to share them with anyone, but I, I, we had this church. My husband and I have started three churches through the years, as I've told you before. And I had these women that I loved and, and there were times when I would open up my scribbly scrabbly journal and share one of those poems and the women would say to me, oh, I want to hear more. And I'd go, well, maybe let me think about that. And so one day, a friend of mine came up to me and said, Janie, I said, yes, um, hello, I'm seeing her face and I've lost her name. I'll think of it in a minute. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep going. Janie, I bought you a seat at a writer's conference and you're going. She didn't ask me. She went ahead and bought the ticket and told me. It was in San Diego. And I said, hmm, well, hmm, this is an interesting hmm. And I said, well, Chris, that's her name. I hope she listens to this. I'm so grateful to her. I said, oh, Chris, um, haven't seen her in a while. Chris, really? Yes, really. You're taking your poems to this writer's conference. And I went, I am. 
Uh, they are in my scribbly scrabbly journal. Do you have things hidden away, tucked away in your scribbly scrabbly journal or computer or iPhone? What do you have squirreled away that nobody's ever seen? I want to challenge you to bring it out into the light. And I had to be challenged, so I did. I attended this writer's conference. It wasn't a huge conference. It was a gathering of maybe 50 people down in San Diego. Well, I'm going to jump to the end of the story uh, to tell you that the first person who ever called me a poet was one of the instructors at that conference. He called me Janie Poet. And I went, Janie Poet? Really? Do you think that? Well, he absolutely thought it. He turned in my scribbly scrabbly poems and little did I know that every year they would pick a writer of the year and I almost didn't even go to the banquet that night. I was having such a tough day. Can you relate? How many times have wonderful things happened in your life? Maybe only once, that's fine. Has one time, have you shown up where you didn't want to go and something wonderful happened? Has that ever happened to you? I drug myself to this dinner that I really wanted to go home and go to bed. I was exhausted, but I went. And lo and behold, I was given the award for writer of the year with my scribbly scrabbly poems. That was in 1997. You do the math. I'm not good at math. Tell me how many years ago that was. What a fun, amazing, stunning happening in my life. But you know, I didn't believe it. it. Took me a long time. I'm really off the track. But as I go off the track, I tell you things that I hope will inform your life. I hope you will understand that you may feel like you have nothing to share with the world. I felt that way, my friends. You may feel that God will never say to you, here, take my hand and share. You may feel that. Matter of fact, you could begin sharing just by liking and sharing this video with other people. Maybe people who need to be encouraged to step in to their calling that they really don't want to own. They may be an artist and really love, have a passion for art, but they're scared to death. I can relate to that too. They may be, really want to be a chef. But they've got this job that they do every day and they don't dare stop what they're doing and go to, sh to school and learn to be a master chef. Oh, my friends, don't be afraid to follow your passion. Know that it, you have to count the cost. I, I'm not one of those motivational speakers that'll tell you to get out on the limb to get the fruit and not warn you that the limb can break. I've had that too. But if... In spite of yourself, you receive nudge after nudge, um, person after person who say to you, you are a poet. I had this happen over and over and over, and it took a lot of years for me to say, yes, I am a poet. And now on my website, it says, poet of the spiritual life. You see, I'm not like other poets. I'm not a complicated poet. I'm, I'm a spiritually oriented poet, as you know, if you've listened to me. Sort of like, dare I say, David the Psalmist who, by the way, said, this is our scripture for the day. Listen up. It comes from Psalm 16, verse 11. David, the poet, said, hold on, let me gather my thoughts. Ah, matter of fact, I'm going to review so that I say it exactly right. Yes. In your presence, Lord, is joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hmm. There's a poet after my own heart.
In your presence, Lord, is joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Did you know there is great pleasure in the presence of God? That was one of the chapters of my little book that you can receive for free in a PDF if you go and subscribe to my website. You don't get a lot of blogs because frankly, I don't have time to write them, but you can get that book free. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Do you know that in the presence of God is great joy? My friends, this world is fading and falling, and so are we, fading and falling. Isaiah, the great prophet, said, All flesh is like grass, and its beauty like the flower of the fields. Flowers fade. Flesh fails. I think I quoted him wrong, but it's okay. The word of God endures forever. That is all a prophet after my own heart. There is the testimony of truth. The word of God lives on forever. If you are hungry for truth, get yourself in the word of God. Don't turn to lesser books before you know the truth. For you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, that verse is often taken out of context. Jesus said, if you are truly my disciples, you will continue in my word and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In over Harvard University is the last part of the verse, which I quoted in the beginning. But truth must be connected to the wisdom of Yeshua, the very wisdom of God. If we seek truth in lesser places, we will get lesser truth. We will have little T's instead of the big T. There's a lot of truth out there. Hey, I'll be the first to say I learn all over the place. I learn from people who are not, don't follow Yeshua. I think we should all learn. God's truth shows pops up everywhere. Do not limit God. I am not about that. God is everywhere and he can speak through a donkey if he has to. And he did to Balaam in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, in the first covenant with Abraham, in that what we, what Christians call the Old Testament, which is so alive and new. But Balaam was going the wrong way. And angels tried to tell him, Balaam, Balaam, you're going the wrong way. He wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. He wasn't obeying God. He was going by his own heart apart from the wisdom of Yeshua. And finally, the Lord God spoke through the donkey. Yeah, he did. It's the truth. Look it up. Google it. Balaam and the donkey. So friends, I don't limit God. He can speak. The, the rocks can cry out if the rocks need to cry out. Jesus said it himself. But all lesser truth is under the big truth, the big T. We must stay under the big T so that we can find how the little T's arrange around the big T, if you know what I'm saying. Jesus said, if you are truly my disciples, you will continue in my word. He didn't say the world's word. He didn't say, hmm, that guy over there, his word. He didn't say, oh, what soothsayers tell you or fortune tellers or palm readers tell you or cards tell you or gems, stones tell you. He said, what I tell you, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. 
if we depend upon lesser truth to get take us all the way to the end, all the way into the kingdom of God, we will come up short. And I say that with great passion because I love you. I want you to find the truth. When I was in graduate school, one of my professors said, the world today doesn't believe in the big T. There is no big T. Everything's relative. Everybody has their own little T and they follow their own heart and their own mind. And my friends, my professor was not happy with that, but he had accepted it. I don't. I won't. I must tell you the truth. There is a big T and it is my heart to help you find the big T. The big T can be found in Yeshua, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man and no woman comes to the Father except through me. Now, don't shoot me. I'm the messenger of Yeshua. And that's what he said. And yesterday, I went to a Torah class with my beautiful friend, Rebecca. Rebecca has been studying Hebrew for seven years. She gets up every morning at four o'clock. So do I. And she has been instructed. There we go. Everybody listens to their instructions. Listen to me. You have a purpose and a, God has a plan for you. Her instructions were to study Hebrew, and she has been diligently pouring herself over Hebrew. And guess what? I get to learn from my dear friend, Rebecca. Uh, my, some friends and I are going to Rebecca's class on the Torah. And the reason I tell you that is because yesterday, Rebecca shared with us that when Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that the first letter of way, truth, and life, in Hebrew, those letters, we, he didn't say it in Hebrew, but in Hebrew, those first letters say the one. So what Yeshua was saying, I am the one. I'm the one that you're hungry for. I'm the one that you desire. I'm the big T. And if you want to know the Father, draw near to me. Because I dwell with the Father. He said, I do what I see my Father doing. He met with his father, Abba, our Father by faith, every morning probably at 3 a.m., and listened to his instructions for the day. Yeshua was obedient to Abba. As we are obedient to Yeshua and the spirit of Yeshua, which is the Holy Spirit, and all three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are one. Yeshua will instruct us and teach us and the way we should go so that we can find our why no, and so it can sustain us in the storms of life. And the storms will be intensifying on this planet. You can bank on it. Mark my word. The storms will be intensifying. And I'll leave the rest to Yeshua and Abba Father and spirit, because I don't know more than that. I know that it is inevitable, like a woman in childbirth, for the contractions to get stronger and stronger and stronger before the second advent entering of Yeshua as the ruler, the conqueror over evil. Now, friends, you may say, well, what about all those people who never heard about Jesus, Yeshua, are they going to hell because they haven't heard? My friends, don't fool yourself. Don't use that straw man argument to push away from the big T. Yeshua, good shepherd, is per perfectly capable of finding those who seek him, even if they don't know his name. You see, the apostle Paul told us that we're held accountable for what we know. Listen up. 
Those who are born in the deepest, darkest places of the planet, who have were raised in homes where there was no God, there was only atheism. Uh, oh boy, have I got a story or two for you. I won't go there. I'm going to get too far off the track. Yeshua finds them. If you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. And sometimes we seek for something we don't even know what it is. We don't know its name. We don't know what it is. But go deeper, my friends. Cry out for help and you will receive because Yeshua hears. The good shepherd hears the sheep crying knowing he knows what their deepest desires are, even if they don't know. So don't let the big T be thrown away because you want to use a straw man argument that not everyone is heard and, and that it's exclusive. No, it's an invitation. Jesus invited us to follow him the way to God is through Yeshua. And if you are listening to me now, you are receiving information that you will be accountable for. Follow Yeshua. Now, this assignment, boy, boy, oh boy, have I gone all around the board. I know the men friends listening to me say, would you please, Janie, I don't know how you're all over the board. Yes, I am. But it all applies, my friends, because all of it contains information and all of it is underneath the big T. Now, where I started was to say that I was a little late coming on because I had an assignment I wasn't expecting. I just thought I was going to get myself ready to talk to you. And, you know, that's not too hard. I sit and listen. And I make my things and I get on and here we go. Except Yeshua called me to go to a painting I was working on. A painting that began with a poem. It begins there for me. It begins in different places for different people. For me, it's a poem. So I had received this poem that I'm going to share with you. And then it became a picture. And then this morning, it became more. I was asked to finish this and show it to you. And so it's behind me. Oh, yes. Um, it's scary, and I know it's not perfect, but hey, there is no perfection. Um, this is first, what do we see? This is a vision of the New Jerusalem. I did another painting of that, but this one is different. I think I showed it to you last week. Um, This is the poem. I'm going to read it to you. And this is what I was asked to paint. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> Yeshua. Mm. Yes. It is the best I can do right now, but I think you get the picture. Um, I'm going to read you the poem, and I'm going to give you information through listening to this poem. So if you would settle yourself and perhaps close your eyes and just listen, I hope that it will encourage your heart. I search beyond the land to a kingdom that comes where the king of peace reigns forever. As sandaled feet walk the land, empower dirt to heal, touches shriveled flesh, makes fresh. As a baby snuggles in loving arms, face to face, I hear rocks cry out. Trees clap their hands as creator meets creation. Earth weeps for joy. Angels surround, breathless. Demons flee, screech. We know who you are. 
come to the kingdom of God. Yeshua declares again and again, open your eyes to see, ears to hear. I will be found by you. Look beyond the land. I stand at your right hand closer than the air you breathe. Holy visitation continues. How hard the human heart. Not to sway. Kiss the feet of divinity. Even now, only a few believe. Even now, only a few believe. I pray that you are some of the few that believe. And when I say believe, I don't mean just intellectual stuff up here. I mean trust. I mean live by it. I mean walk by faith, not by sight. I mean, obey Yeshua and what he tells you to do, not what you want to do. Because our wanters have been impacted, poisoned by the prince of the power of the air who tells us dark things will satisfy. And they don't. They deliver us to death. My friends, your wanter needs to be purified. And that is what I encourage you to do. Pray for the Holy Spirit of God to purify your wanter so that you will be able to hear Yeshua's voice. You will be able to hear the Holy Spirit of God. You will be able to do what Abba Father has called you to do uniquely to bless others, to love this world, to help heal the land. Everyone can participate in this great, great why. The why is the kingdom of God that is coming. The why is something bigger than our flesh. It is bigger than us. It is where we bow and sway and kiss his feet. He is the Holy One of God who loves us with an everlasting love, who died for us, who took our sin on the cross, who delivers us from death when we say yes to Yeshua's invitation. That's all you have to do. Yes, Yeshua. Yes, yes, yes. I will follow you, Jesus said. The birds of the air have nests, the foxes have holes, but Yeshua has no place to lay his head. He is satisfied when we say yes to him. The traveling God searches for those who call upon his name. And when we call upon his name, Everything he suffered for us means something. We actually bring joy to his heart when we say yes to Yeshua. We can give back the joy. My friends, that is the greatest pleasure on earth, to give to Yeshua joy when we say yes. And my friends, we say yes by our life, not by our words. Does your life shine with the light of Yeshua? Does your life say there is a better way? Follow the way, the truth, and the life, and you will find joy. You will find your why, and everything else will follow. 
Yeshua said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be yours as well. He knows, you know, he doesn't ask us not to have a nest. He doesn't say that we can't have a home and food and family. In fact, he wants us to so that we can pass on, give a legacy of life to the community we live in, to the family around us, to the world. He calls us to life. He calls us to abundance. He calls us to so much, more than we can imagine. But we first need to say yes. Jesus, we are told Jesus, Yeshua said, anyone who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God, just like Lot's wife, who was leaving wicked Sodom. Boy, I got an earful about Sodom yesterday at the Torah class. I won't go there. Just trust me. It was truly only deserving destruction. It was a wretched place with horrible violence, horrible immorality, horrible hatred. And God had sent messenger after messenger to Sodom to Plead with them to change their ways as I plead with you now. Sodom refused. They enjoyed their wickedness. My friends, if that's your heart, bye-bye. There's nothing I can do for you. If you love darkness, bye-bye. If you want the light, and want to live according to the plan of God, then stay, remain, because Yeshua can help you find your way. Sodom did not want the warning. And so God did what God said he would do. Repent or I will destroy. Every good parent Every good parent says, don't do it. Please don't do it. If you touch the hot stove, you'll get burned. When we touch the hot stove and get burned, well, he, they warned us. God is not interested in destroying. God is interested in redeeming. He wants to redeem your life. And Jesus is trying to speak with, to us with great seriousness when he says, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, your heart's not with me. That's what he's saying. That was true of Lot's wife. Her heart was in Sodom. She didn't want to go out of the wickedness. You see, God gives us what we really want. If we keep saying over and over and over, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, then you're choosing death. You're not choosing life. Joshua said, choose this day who you will serve. Do you want darkness or do you want light? Your choice. You have an opportunity to say no to darkness or no to darkness, and yes to light. Yeshua watches, waits, loves. He is the Prince of Peace. If you follow him, you will find peace. He is the promised one. And he is the one who answers prayer, who hears who waits sometimes to answer. He's lining up everything in our life to answer some of our prayers. He's not in a hurry, but he knows what he's doing, and he never stops helping, showing, leading, taking things away that distract and destroy, and calling us deeper, higher into his love. And so with that, I'm putting on my tallit, that I showed you last week that I bought in Israel. And a tallit is a prayer, prayer shawl. That's all it is. Here it is. Yep, there I am. And it is a symbol of submission. You see, this white hair of mine also signals submission. Let me see if I can do this. Ah, there we are. 
My friends, join me as we cover ourselves with the presence of God where there is great joy and pleasures forevermore. Yeshua, Jesus, Holy Father, loving, comforting spirit, we come to you with reverence, with love, with gratitude. We sway, we bow down and honor you. We kiss your feet, your sandaled feet that walk this planet. We thank you that you empower. We thank you that you know the way. We thank you that you give us light and love that this world cannot give. Forgive us for choosing lesser gods, for finding comfort in wickedness, for finding comfort in those things that destroy. We ask, Holy Father, that you would cleanse our souls, that you would flood us with your holy light so that we might be strong so that we might love as you love, so that we might build up and not tear down, so that we might encourage and not discourage. I pray for all those who are listening, Yeshua. I pray that you would send forth your spirit and you would comfort, comfort your people who cry out, even those many of those most of those around the world who are not listening now, send forth your angels, send forth your spirit, and deliver those in darkness. Bring forth the captives out of prison. Oh, save. Oh, help. Oh, deliver. We trust you. We believe you. We wait for you to do all that you said you would do in our lives, for our families, for our world. We know that you are always working and we trust you for you are good and you are God. Come Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Bring heaven to earth. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. My friends, I have not tuned in to your faces. I'm going to take a breath right now. And I see lots of thumbs up. So I assume that means you've been listening and praying with me. I know that there are many, many needs. I can't meet them all. But Yeshua can. The Spirit of God can. My job is to tell you what I hear and see. To share with you what I know. And I empower you to turn your face towards the light. So that you may be bright with the hope of God. I encourage you not to settle for the lesser T. I encourage you to follow the way and to pray for those who do not know the way that they will find it. And so now I want to look and see who's listening. Hello, Elaine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. If I have touched your heart, it is my great pleasure and privilege. Thank you, Elaine, for saying so. I hope you will like and share this so that others can hear. I see someone talking to me with a language I don't understand. It looks like Hebrew. I um, bless you. Bless everyone who's listening. Um, hi, Roby. I look like an angel. Well, thank you. I think it's all this white hair, <laughs> which, by the way, happened in the fire of trials and tribulations. Uh, thank you. You're very kind, Roby. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Um, may you become his angel in the world. Um, who else wants to weigh in, speak to me personally? I'd love to speak to you. Would you like and share this with your friends? Would you, my friends, um, just do what you can to make a difference? Hello, Elaine. I'm glad I touched your heart. Hi, Heidi. Good to see you. Roby, oh, thank you. My eyes, thank you. Hi, Og. Oh, thank you. Marina, 
Oh, you're going through a tough divorce. Oh, yes, yes, I'll pray for you. Hi, Tom. You are welcome. Good to see your face. Uh, blessings to you, Tom. Um, I pray for your family. I pray for those of you who are going through difficult times, um, families falling apart, marriages falling apart. Oh, Yeshua. Help those who are broken. Um, fill in the broken places and mend the lives of those who are listening. Is there anyone else who'd like to say something to me personally? Um, let's do it now because I'm about to sign off. Um, if there's anyone who'd like to say something. Um, otherwise, um, I will see you next week. And I love you in the love of Christ. And I will end as I always do. Oops, I see someone coming up. Sarah, more lords. Hi, Cindy. You needed to hear this. I'm glad. Thank you for that encouragement. Actually, when you tell me that, my friends, you encourage me. Roxana, oh, thank you. Uh, Marina, thank you, sister. Ronald, oh, I'm glad you were inspired. Rachel, you're welcome. You know what? Your comments encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing. And I need encouragement, right? Everybody needs encouragement. And that's why if you like what I'm doing, share it. Let people know. And if they can't listen on uh, live like this, I do post. The one thing I definitely do is I post these videos on YouTube. And so you can tell your friends to type in Janie Seltzer on YouTube and you they can hear. Oh, Evelyn, I love you, Evelyn. Good to see you. All right, everyone. I am going to sign off. I think it's been a while. And I'm going to sign off with the prayer I always pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will Bring us with great joy into his glorious presence. Mm, all glory to him who alone is God our Savior. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, power, dominion, and authority belong to him who was before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All Glory to God. Bye-bye, my friends. I'll see you next week, the Lord willing. Bye-bye.